Hello folks, my name is Sarov, and I'm an Audio Engineering Society member as well as a student and researcher at Stanford University. If you go to the PECDB website, you can see that we have published a new white paper detailing our latest research. And yes, this is a white paper. You can see Oratory 1990 saying, oh, you should publish in the Audio Engineering Society. And then Mad Economist replying saying that, you know, we should publish something useful with methodology that means something. So, okay. So I said, hey, instead of waiting until May for the next Audio Engineering Society convention or conference, I'm going to make this paper accessible to all because even if I did publish in the Audio Engineering Society, only AES members would be able to read the paper or you would have to purchase it to read it anyway. So I don't really see the point for that. And for clarification, I did attempt to submit the paper to the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society, but they said that because it was an online listening test, it wasn't, I guess, up to the standard of the journal, but they wanted me to publish it in a conference or a convention instead. As you can see from the editor's comments, this is an exciting study which is worth publishing. I find that this study should not be published in the AES journal, but rather in a conference or a convention, okay? So basically we have the blessing of the Audio Engineering Society saying that um, this is essentially conference or convention material. And there's been a lot of confusion about peer reviewing and how Dr. Sean Olive's work was supposedly peer reviewed in the Harmon studies. And if you actually look at the fine print, you can see that for pretty much all of his papers, maybe you know one or two are exceptions, it says this convention paper was selected based on a submitted abstract and 750 word pre -C that have been reviewed by at least two qualified anonymous reviewers. The complete manuscript was not peer reviewed, okay? So essentially none of Dr. Sean Olive's work was really fully peer reviewed. And for convention and conference audio engineering society papers like the bar is actually not as high as you would think to get a paper into the conference and talk about it. So I don't know why people are so hell-bent on acting like the Harmon studies are like the holy grail of research when none of these papers are even submitted in the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society, which is actually quite a bit harder to get a paper submitted into. With that said, let's go into this paper, Comparative Evaluation of Headphone Target Curves Using Virtual Listening Tests. In this study, we tested six target curves for in-ear and six target curves for over-ear headphones. And we tested 403 listeners identified with browser cookies. So the amount of listeners already greatly supersedes anything in the Harmon studies or the such. And we tested over the course of 40 days. Um, as many of you who have done the test know, there's A, B, or no preference toggles you can select your preference for. And we had 24 trials. Here are the six target curves tested for the in-ear test, the Moondrop VDSF, JM1 with the minus 10 dB tilt, Haifa Endgame, PEC TBIE, Harman IE 2019, IF Preference 2025. For the over-ear studies, we tested Harman over-ear 2013, the KMOR KB50XX with a minus 10 dB tilt, Harman over-ear 2018 linear base, PEC DB over-ear, Haifa Endgame, and Harman over-ear 2018. The average spectrum of these songs we used is very similar to the minus 4.5 decibels per octave tilt of the average musical spectrum, so the song choices we used are very neutral for this test. In the results for in-ear headphones, Hi-Fi Endgame had the highest win rate across all the different comparisons. It was beating the PEC DB IE target in direct comparisons, and it had higher win rates against all of the other target curves aside from JM1, which is pretty insignificant it seems. But yeah, I mean, then we go to the over-ear target curve win-loss matrix, and it's a similar story, except that the PEC dB over-ear target has a bit of a higher win rate against the KMAR KB50XX with a minus 10 dB tilt target than the high fan game target. And, and because of that, the high fan game target has a statistically significant Bradley Terry score advantage over the PEC dB IE target. And you can see like IEF preference 2025 criticals target, it's all the way at the bottom. And just looking at the um, estimated probability of the in-ear pairwise comparisons of the Bradley Terry model fit under normal approximation. The um, high fan game target has a 99.1% chance of being preferred over the PEC DB IE target at the time. And, you know, even the PEC DB IE target has 100% win rate against every other target curve or 100% confidence that it's more preferred against 
and any of these other target curves. And the IEF Preference 2025 target curve lost to every single one here. So, you know, for critical, that's just like extremely embarrassing. How do you have your target curve lose to literally every single target curve in this test? I don't know. Um, but then, you know, we go to the headphones.com hyped up target curve, the KMR KB50XX, and it's losing to every other target curve in the win rates. Um, and it has a 100% confidence that it is not preferred versus any of the other target curves tested in the over ear listening tests. Um, so, yeah, really like interesting results. I mean, the Harman targets preferred pretty average, but. Like the HIFA end game and PEC TV targets are clearly leagues above the Harmon target or any of these target curves in terms of listener preference. And we even have, you know, some statistics of preference depending on the song and and the Kendall's coefficients of coordinates for target curve rankings across the different songs was pretty strong. So um yeah, preference for target curve across songs was very consistent for the most part. To celebrate the release of our new white paper, we are now offering a new option called preset EQ where you can select any headphone and just click preset EQ and you will get a 10 and 15 EQ to the Hi-Fi Endgame target curve, which is currently the most preferred target curve in our um, AB shootout listening tests. But with that said, the results of our new personalized EQ listening tests have given us a target curve so far, which is a bit different from the Hi-Fi Endgame target curve. And I actually think it sounds a bit better and we're gonna incorporate it in the shootout soon, but we wanna get some more results, so please be sure to take the personalized EQ listening test and share it with as many people as possible so we're able to get as many results as we can and get the strongest target curve possible and really define the industry standard. And we'll definitely publish a paper on this topic, which hopefully can then be published in the Audio Engineering Society Conference in May, because, I mean, we finished this white paper um, the comparative evaluation of headphone target curves over the summer, but you know, due to timing conflicts, we're not really able to get it um, into the AES Long Beach convention coming up at the end of this month, I think, or some not the end of this month, but you know, later in this month, there's an AES convention in Long Beach where we could have presented this paper, but you know, I guess we just didn't have it done in time. But regardless, that's in the past. You can go read the paper on our website share it with people knowledgeable about audio. I mean, this is the most rigorous study on headphone target curve evaluation ever. So another important update is that we're now letting users donate to PECDB. If you click the heart in the top left, support PECDB. Love PECDB? Consider supporting us to help make audio better for everyone. Your donation directly fuels cutting edge sound quality research, free listening tools, and future audio innovations. Guys, remember, these tools are being offered for free and We've put our code base through some complexity and cost calculators for just assuming that there's industry standard pay rates for the work we've done in terms of software engineering, and it's been estimated that it should cost around $500,000. So quite a significant um, time investment has gone into this project and really just offering it for free to make audio better for everyone. So if PECDB has helped you and you do believe in our mission, please consider clicking support and It'll take you to a Stripe payment link where the default amount is $10. But, you know, as much as you can give us, um, we'd really appreciate it. It would help um, run our servers and, you know, just make audio better for everyone. That's the goal. But yeah, thanks for watching. Try out the preset EQ. Listen to the Hi-Fi Endgame target. Let me know what you think. Um, do the personalized EQ to get your own custom headphone target curve. And, you know, the results of the personalized EQ so far are better than the high fan game target curve in my opinion and i think in the shootout it will definitely beat the high fan game target curve but we still want to get more results so that um you know the target curve doesn't change significantly in like a week or something but yeah um thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time